This is ADT 1160U, Digital Communication Technologies. The title of this video clip is Communities of Practice. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. What consists of a community of practice? How do communities of practice form? What are the roles played by the members of a community of practice? According to the tenets of constructivism and the followers of Russian educational theorist Lev Vygotsky, learning starts with social interactions and then moves to an intrapersonal process that allows the learner to internalize new knowledge and skills. In other words, when people interact, they learn from each other. This explanation is very close to the learning principles that underlie communities of practice. This term was coined by Etienne Winger and Jan Leaf. According to Winger, communities of practice are groups of people who share a concern or a passion for something they do, and they learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. Members of a community of practice all experience different levels of participation. While some are fully engaged in enhancing the community's knowledge, experiences, and skills and learning at the same time, others start by peripheral activities. They observe and analyze the members' behaviors, reactions, feedback, and they evaluate the information without really interacting a lot with the community until they get familiarized with its members and ongoing activities and become confident enough to intervene. Then they move from legitimate peripheral participation into full participation. During the peripheral phase, many users are engaged in inner speech, described by Vygotsky as higher thoughts that help them focus, process deeply, evaluate, and plan. There are numerous occasions when we learn how to do something because we join a group and spend time interacting with them, slowly allowing ourselves to spend time to get absorbed in their ways of doing things. For example, during the time Vicky spent in Lebanon, she wasn't able to have her regular morning coffee at the coffee shop. In fact, in Lebanon, people make a special kind of coffee in the morning called Turkish coffee. As a coffee enthusiast, Vicky had watched some video tutorials on how to make Turkish coffee, but she never succeeded in doing it. She started drinking coffee when she was in college because it was a social thing to do. Students went out at the coffee shop and hung out while studying. This is where she got the habit to start her mornings at the coffee shop and acquired a taste for Café Americano. The first time she drank Turkish coffee, Vicky had a really hard time to swallow it because it is very potent. In fact, the first time she drank it, people said not to drink it all the way to the bottom. But she forgot and swallowed a whole bunch of coffee grains. That was a good lesson learned. Every morning, she watched her hosts make Turkish coffee. One morning, she asked to do it herself. They described how to do it, but immediately they took her hand to show her exactly what to do and what not to do and at which critical moment. In other words, they could describe the process, but there was nothing like doing it. When she came back to Canada, Vicky was shocked at how watery Café Americano tasted like. She started drinking tea in the morning because she just couldn't cope with the taste of the coffee she had enjoyed for most of her life. The synthesis questions for this video clip are as follows. Many people claim that coffee drinking is a culture. In the light of Vicky's experience, explain how the concept of a community of practice sheds light on our coffee drinking habits. This video described a face-to-face -face activity inside a community of practice. Think of an example of an online community of practice in which social learning exists. What do people learn? How do they learn it?